doesn't really matter that much for the first session, I, I, I imagine. Um, maybe a little. Maybe a little. Uh, but either way, like I said in chat, uh, what we're going to do in the first off is uh, we're going to introduce characters. And then we're going to find out how everybody met each other. I think there was a lot of talk about how Madman and Casey's character talk got together. But I wouldn't say a lot else. of talk. It's more like, oh, you're drunk. Oh, yeah, oh you have a yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, uh, it was a little bit of talk. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll figure out... The two characters. Yes. Yeah. The first job afterwards. So, um... Oh. You there, Terry? Everything yes. good? Okay. I am here. I am listening. Cut out for a second there. I'm hiding on the uh, floor because I'm still eating dinner, by the way. No problem. <laughs> I'm tempted to go hide as well and just listen while I eat pizza. That's okay. But I've already eaten, so I'll be fine for a little bit. So, uh, I believe you, we know who Casey's character is. Is that correct? Does everybody know who Casey's character is? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone who doesn't know get off my ship. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, and Madman, I think it was talked about briefly, but I think um, not everybody oh, you, knows. <laughs> you mean I have been unclear? On you have been unclear? Yes. What are you guys talking about? Play, so. Much unclear. He did not see where to ask dwarf rune scribe. <laughs> Right. With a ring of polymorph. <laughs> uh, no, uh, he's uh, he, yeah, he's a dwarf, and he uh, is, uh, was previously a soldier. He's no more, and and yes, after his re revelation about oh shit, this army thing isn't working out for me, he decided, <laughs> dude, being a rune scribe would be great. So he's. Currently training to be that. Yeah, that's like okay. Of course, right now. Uh, uh, and he's also a pilot. Apprenticeship or oh no, no you order mail and you get a, a certificate. It's very easy, actually. <laughs> okay, so you're a uh, pilot. You're the pilot mm -hmm. and the navigator, I think. Right? Correct. Yeah, I think both me and Casey can navigate. Right. And pilot. And, and pilot. pilot, yeah. We, what it's always good is, with backup. Is, <laughs> what skills are navigation and piloting based off of? Uh, uh, are actually custom skills. Navigation and get. pilot. <laughs> navigation yeah. and pilot. So navigation is intellect and uh, pilot is dexterity. Yes. You so navigating take, is basically charting out. Uh, you can actually just uh, take whatever you'd like uh, as a part of the class skills or the background skills if you'd like to switch it up and get or repair in fact you can also get repair oh I skill. something i've forgotten hang on no oh, i got it never mind i got it probably should have told you that i'm sorry i completely went off my mind it was probably in the write-up and i just missed it also Technology, if you're using that still, I don't know if you're using that no, for like third age technology. shit. Okay, never mind then. Just repair pilot and navigation. Yeah, I didn't pick uh, repair, but I do have the other two. Oh, and sanity, but we'll get to that later. Sanity is a score, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I believe that's, I'm... that's on the character sheet, so we don't need to do that. Yep, actually, is does he have or uh, would? It looks yeah, I'm thinking he score? should have it, right? He should have a sense score. Actually, yes, because you're a uh, you're an you're illithid. You actually should have an uh, a sanity score. A sanity score. I, yes. I always uh, so kind of in the case the were very hard to drive insane because they were grown up with it being the normal. Exactly. Mm. Fair, <laughs> but Doc the Doc made strength. the point of he separated from the hive mind. True. So. True. It's like Borg withdrawals. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, anyway, in the character sheet, Terry, uh, in the little gear icon, 
there is a sanity score you can check down on the lower left hand side. Yeah, it's a bit hard to find. It's under saving Found throws. It. Yeah, there you go. And check. sanity is calculated by. Oh shit! What was it? it was. Uh, it wasn't a two to six. Uh, yeah, min plus I'm minus intelligence, but plus wisdom or something. No, like no, that. no. It was uh, it's minus intelligence, minus wisdom. Um, is the more wise and intelligent you are, the better you understand the things that are coming after you, and therefore you go insane more. Yeah, if you don't understand the otherworldly, it's better. it's Call of Cthulhu idea, yeah. mm. ideology. Uh, so go ahead and roll that. Actually, roll three d six. And you get advantage. So 12 plus 3d6. Hey! Minus int plus. Because he's a fucking Ill illithid. Fuck yourself, nerd! <laughs> I'm a chaos mage! <laughs> well, you weren't always, right? I know, fuck you. <laughs> like, he was born that way. That's a good question, Casey. Oh my god, Casey's title. You said 3d6? Yeah, it's ridiculous. 3d6, yes. I, I expect you to use it every time you refer to me. I'm just gonna call you sir. So add 12 to that, and then uh, int mod and wisdom mod. Uh, but it's you also have advantage, so 3d6 twice. Oh. Uh, another 3d6? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that is a 3d6, <laughs> that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, 21. so 11. Uh, so, average. Three minus int minus whiz. So, throw the formula up there, because I keep hearing different people saying things, and it's... Yes, so 12 plus 11 minus 4 minus 2. 17. That's pretty good. Okay, see, that was the not the one he's asking for. He wanted the 36 one. Oh. But yeah, yeah, 17. Actually, we have the same sanity. Hey! Just uh, as sane as the Chaos Mage. Should we all do the sanity thing right now, or just... No, I mean, we haven't been exposed to it. You haven't been exposed well, to it. Well, uh, uh, Casey my, my, brought up a good thing that he's an ex-god, so yes, he would, he would have sanity. Well, what about my thing about, you know, kind of being stranded in the shadow films <laughs> during my training? Uh Granted I was with Shadowfell is more The is, Shadow isn't, Fell is isn't really cute. sanity. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not it can it can be insane, no, it's but stuff. it's mainly death. Or darkness. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. I just wasn't I, sure. I have a lovely thirteen sanity. Oh fantastic. I mean it makes sense. You are a crazy person, so I mean Hey, I have a plus one still. Yeah, and I'm why very are, glad that I don't have a Why aren't you course. rolling a 12 plus 2d6? I took 12, I subtracted my int and wisdom, and then I added 2d6 to it. He just went ahead and did the other math first. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. We that's weird math, okay. 12 <laughs> minus 5 leaves me 7. I know, oh, I get it, I get it. It's just ridiculous a way of doing it. <laughs> so, down, uh, you actually equivalent. have sanity now, Terry. Okay. Um... You have 17 sanity. Okay. Wait, does that show up on the screen now or on the sheet? Yeah, yes, it's underneath all charisma. Below charisma. Yeah. Below charisma. I see it now. <laughs> nice. Get a one. Nice. <laughs> well, and it leads you into it, actually. <laughs> actually, uh, did that. That didn't oh, work right. It didn't add yeah. a modifier. Mine does. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that I don't have a sanity score. Means that I'm the sanest, sanest per person. You will here. in like five minutes. <laughs> That's how the campaign opens. We all get a sanity score. <laughs> okay. I think we're ready. Yep. I think so. All right. So, uh, Madman, you just did it. Uh, why don't you uh, introduce your character, Taylor? Uh, my character is Vorka, who is... I don't really know why she would be... The only thing I can think of for her being with the ship is she's trying to... <laughs> she just wants to stay on the move. Really? Because, we have a lot uh, of that. Please? Yes. Yeah. It's more... 
I just don't want to be in one place, so hey, I'll join you guys. And she doesn't really talk a whole lot about her past, really. That's fine, I talk enough for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but she is a monk, and she is a, uh, where the sun soul monk. What, what ways? Uh, half orc. What? Half orc. A half orc, okay. What's the other half? I don't know. You Something weird. Human, probably. probably. It's probably. most common. Leprechaun. That's why she's Heart green. Pixie. Anyway. Ah! Uh, so, and do they know about your stint in the Shadowfell or no? Uh. <coughs> oh, uh, yeah. That, that part she wouldn't hide, because that question probably would come up eventually. I'm like, yeah, hey, where's your. Who. What monastery are you from? Yeah, right. W would be a common question. It's like, oh, it's on the Shadowfell. What? Right, so his his monastery comes from the Shadowfell, and you're a shadow Sunzo. monk. Sun yeah, Suns. Mm hmm. I thought you said you were going to be a shadow. Nope, Sun Soul. Got it. Sun Soul. So I fight things with radiant energy. Well, Find a Sun That works against. Shadowfell. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that would be a Stop. good way to survive the Shadowfell. <laughs> yes! I thought it was very fitting that I rolled that up. I just completely rolled that. A beacon of light in the darkness. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you could also say a big fucking target on your back. like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. That too. Yeah. You could just change uh, the flare to make it lunar as well. <laughs> yeah. You could. You could. Uh... Go ahead and uh, introduce your character, Seeger. Alrighty, we have Gerdis, um, who is quite a mysterious looking man. He keeps himself heavily cloaked. Uh, he has several bandages along the right and left arms. Uh, the only skin that you can see from his face and his hands are heavily scarred or tattooed. It's hard to tell. Um, they may be tattoos, they may be scars. Um, if you get what I mean, like the traditional, like, scarring tattoos. Oh, yeah, okay. we, we could just right. scar your hands up the window for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, he carries on his left side, it's not in the picture, but on his, on his, uh, belt, he carries a big, heavily bound tome. Uh, tome. Big book. Uh, and that's a spell book. Uh, he also carries a staff, but that doesn't seem to be magical. And he is quite, um, quite the talkative person once you get him talking about, uh, secrets or magic. Once either of those topics are brought up, he will start opening up and, like, conversing with people. But other than that, he is quite silent and uh, quite distant. Uh, for his backstory, if if questioned about it, he, he was raised on quite a uh, posh world, he'll call it. Um, a, a civilized uh, theocratic society based on, you know, your your Society, your, your level in society is based on your knowledge. Um, so, he was a learned scholar for most of his life. Uh, but other than that, he he doesn't say much. He's talkative, but doesn't say much. I like that. <laughs> he he's talkative. <laughs> he will talk about things that doesn't involve him. Once they involve him, he will back down. That kind of okay. thing. So, if we think you talk too much, like, what was the name of your mother? You just shut down. <laughs> I will talk about it asking point up. blank, what race are you? Mm. That, yes, what secret. race are you? Oh, what race am I, human? Oh, yeah. excellent. Uh, he does have a one giant glowing big eye. Giant? Why did I say giant? Uh, not giant. It's, it's regular size. I didn't mean to say giant. Uh, for some reason, I was like, I. How does that even? Like, you were thinking beholder. I know. Uh, oh, I you're a beholder. I've met your. <laughs> I've met your kind before. <laughs> I, I suddenly pictured Geralt, 
uh, or uh, Garrett, excuse me, Garrett from the Thief series. He has a. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Um, but no, he has a regular sized uh, eye that just uh, pours magic from it, like magical essence from it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we explained how our character looks. Right. Like I, I don't know what race it, your yours is, Tay. Uh, Tay. Race. Half yeah. Or. Half. All oh, right. Shit. Sorry, I have a memory of a goldfish. And, it, and if you were in the way she's dressed, if you've ever played Diablo, think the monk from Diablo Three. Right. If, okay. If, yeah, if yeah, the we all have pictures that, that. here, right? You yeah. Can see these pictures. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Is it is it correct? Uh, yes. Madman. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is correct. Okay, good. Cool. Uh, and Terry, uh, you oh, it, were you done? Oh See no, you? I was just gonna say. As for like how he got onto the ship, um, he I was probably do that afterwards. But oh, ahead. sorry, yeah, my oh, bad. Okay. No, never mind. Continue. Okay, uh, Terry, uh, yes. go ahead and introduce your character. I mean, we we all pretty much know <laughs> what you're playing, but just to make sure. Well, as a rogue person walks up, the first thing you hear is telepathically, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, I'm not <laughs> what you think. Um, and so, Sword's still drawn. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I am a illithid, yes, but I seem to have the memories, or partial memories, or some memories, or at least the, the soul of whoever I was before I was transformed. Mm. Something went wrong in the birthing <sighs> process. Um, or right, or right, yes, mm -hmm. um, depending on what side you're on. Yes, so I explained that I'm looking to get as far from um, the hive mind that I was from as possible. Uh, any ship will do, but also I will be as helpful as possible. And if there's any creatures along the way that you might have to dispatch, mm -hmm. um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I could help you out with that a little bit. Uh, I have a rather odd dietary restriction. Okay. I want a sitcom that starts like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if right, so... Being human, it's not far off. Being Good human, point. Really? Yeah. A vampire, oh. a werewolf, and a ghost share an apartment. Oh my god, I remember that show. Yes. I used to watch that shit. Being human. Oh my! Well, the, there were two versions. There was an American and a UK British version. Excellent British export that we ruined. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Oh, is, I think is the American was, version not really good. Not very. No, good? it was the American version that was good. I the think American wasn't. version is quite good. It went like several seasons. The British version was like this weird shit where the vampire tried to get with the ghost or something. <laughs> it was really fucking weird. I like that though. That's funny. How would that we even... don't, I'm just playing an illustrated. There'll be nothing okay. weird like that going on. <clears throat> okay, you wake so up and your tentacles are like... He'll introduce a ghost and you might change your mind, so... So, after talking to him for a while, he, he's telepathic. Um, he talks telepathically as much as possible. <clears throat> and uh, you'll start to learn that when his tentacles twitch, that means he's laughing. <laughs> that, that's just how he laughs. That's, that's cool. just how he laughs. Um, yeah, I can figure why you'd want to talk telepathically, considering you don't have a tongue. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that would be that would be difficult. They yeah, actually we'll have to slide one of their tentacles down their throat to use it as a tongue. Ugh. Oh. That's disgusting. Horrifying. I don't need that. I remember that from Critical Role. Or, or just mind control someone to talking for them. Yeah, that's the easiest that's way, it. really. Yeah, that that works. But um. But if you mind so, control me, I'm gonna throw you into space. I am. Um, I, I I mentioned that I can be helpful. I'm not a combatant. Uh, I'll run away from a hard fight, but I am pretty good controller. I tend to slow things down, and I am a decent healer. Mm, very good. Ooh. Healers. Yes. Always good. I haven't heard anybody mention that yet, so I'm, <laughs> yep. I'd throw that I out. Didn't even, I didn't on. even think it crossed yeah. any of ours, yes. our minds. Like, maybe nope. Oh, I was just going to have, like, uh, we'll pick up a physician along I the way. I have this small jar of leeches that, um, don't worry, nice. they're painless. Oh, oh man, we okay. should get a doctor anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? He is a doctor. He has leeches. Uh, uh. If you have leeches, you're a doctor. 
Oh, okay. Well, he, okay. Uh, you have he a is an leader. expert in neurosurgery. Okay, don't jo- <laughs> don't don't judge him. True. <laughs> oh, epilepsy! I can fix that. Um, well, I am done. Okay. Uh, um, a question uh, regarding that, before. actually. Um, is there still like, even though this is like spell jammer space? Is it still like extra tension between dwarves and illithids or underdark creatures whatsoever? I, have, I assume there's Ill- there's tension between the illithids and everyone. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that's a fair yeah. point. But I mean, like dwarves had some extra with the underdark, uh, sure. like in uh, original D and D. So, which is why right. I'm asking. Well, just, like old grudges and stuff like that. Sure, um, there is. I think that was actually from uh, Alandar. You're thinking of there was a lot of that on yeah. Alandar as well. Yeah. There was a lot of yes. that on Alandar, yes. yeah. uh, <laughs> but um, there's certainly a lot of tension between Illithids in, in general. Uh, recently, though, they have uh, vanished, yeah. so uh, there's a lot of questioning of like what's going on with the Illithids and everything like that. Uh, I just wanted still to know so whether or not I was supposed to be racist or not. So. Always, oh, always, yeah. oh, always. always racist. Okay, okay. Or if you're racist. You're a dwarf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there are certain races where I need to be super racist, so I just needed to know, like, which level, like, uh, like, is it elf honest, racist, or is it, Illithid like... Illithid would be one of them. You would mm, be racist, yeah, up there, up there. Okay. to the max. But it's obvious that this illithid isn't the same as all the other illithids. So They're all the same. <laughs> See, I'm I'm practicing. They I'll are just, technically I'll all the same. A lot. But yeah. we're, we're going to anyway. unlock Madman's racist side real quick. Here. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Do you oh, yeah. think that takes effort? <laughs> <laughs> For Madman, no. I mean, he's like so, the third most racist member of our group. Third? Who's second? We all know who's... Oh, you. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, I'm glad I didn't have to say anything to work that out. Yeah. <laughs> the next thing that we're going to do, now that everybody's introduced, is uh, I'm going to have everybody roll a d20 except for Madman. Oh, boy. And uh, we're going to decide... Who goes first? Oh. Oh. Shit, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. first at 20 on something that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a call. Kill them. Ignoring them. Uh, okay, so... We already established that Dazimar Del Rovo, uh... After obtaining his yeah, titles, titles. After obtaining <laughs> his uh, uh, ship from a wealthy merchant's completely mogul, completely legitimately, completely legitimately, uh, very quickly <laughs> got out of there and went to the nearest <laughs> port to try and find crew. Uh, whereupon he found a drunken dwarf by the name of Frawl Ironboot, who raised his hand. Once Dazimar excitedly uh, yelled out into the crowd uh, that he was looking for crew and wanted to know where to find some. Where else to look? Uh, where else to look? Frawl was like, I'm a pilot. And you were like, <laughs> okay, fantastic. Let's do it. <laughs> and that's a wetting process. <laughs> yeah, we, we can leave whenever you want as long as it's now. Uh, the- I mean, this might be a bit how you, as a fallen god, if you have extra senses or something. But I, uh, like, one of my class levels is being a uh, bitch. I mean, I uh, being a uh, uh, divine soul. So not so, really being a bitch. No, but basically, there's a class feature that is basically says favored by the gods. So, if that's something that you could see or something, that might explain why you would be so trusting quickly. <coughs> or I'm just it's looking to get out crazy. of it. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there. But okay, crazy person works for me. I, I, I'm not running away from anything, I just want to leave really quickly. 
I just bought my ship and I really want to try it out yeah. quickly. Yeah, like like right now. <laughs> I really want to leave as well. <laughs> yeah. Really, really soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to be uh, at the tax office in like an hour. <laughs> so next up is uh, Seeger. So shortly after leaving the port that you had just arrived with Frawl, uh, with a new pilot and everything like that, uh, you stumbled upon Gertis. So how did you guys stumble upon Gertis? Let's, let's work this out. Uh, did you find him <coughs> in an asteroid port? Uh, Gertis, well, did you, try and, Gertis, did you find him on Gertis a... Gertis travels a very far, very, very, like, quickly. He will do what he can to jump spheres at a time. Like, right. traveling on ships, maybe even, like, boarding uh, illegally, even, like, <laughs> uh, hitching a ride illegally, if that's what it takes to get to a sphere. Uh, so you stowed away with us while we were leaving quickly. No, no, no. This is just to get to to Cass. Um, to Cass space. Uh, he started hearing about a god looking for an... Wait, do you advertise you're looking for your eye? Have you seen my name? Oh, no. Looking for the eye? Um, yeah. It would probably come up at some point when alcohol you... was involved. Do you... Okay, just, like, at least a magic item, right? Oh, yeah, he's definitely on the search for magic items all the time. Yeah, he... He latches on to you quickly and starts stalking you to the point where he will... Another uh, like, adoring fan. He will <laughs> skim... What I'm trying to say is he's... He, he tries to... He tries to stay ahead of you in terms of, like, salvaging. If you find a salvage... He gets the information and gets someone to go there quicker. Like, he'll jump aboard a neighboring ship and go. Okay, for all while you're to preparing. Kill very quickly. <laughs> what he's trying to do is he's trying to prove that he's a better scavenger. In the sense of, you almost always find him at salvage operations before you. If that's okay. He's trying to get your attention with this. Like, mm. you you say, like, fuck off, this is our salvage. You've been here whatever times you're stealing from us or whatever. Uh, and he's essentially like, I'll go with you if you pay me. Well, yeah, you would be second if I was with you, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I might be right back. I'm going to step away for just a second. All right. Okay. No All right. Um, I'm happy with that. Could we have one... Uh, ever so slight uh, amendment to it, though. Yeah. Whatever you need. The, the time that we finally got you to join us was like the fourth or fifth time that you'd gotten somewhere before us, and <laughs> I got really fed up with with it, and and shot you. And oh, then that's unfortunate. <laughs> Fra Frawl kind of brought you on board, and okay. while you were recovering on board the ship, you decided to stay on the ship. <laughs> So basically, another amendment. I want extra pay for you shooting me. <laughs> I'm a member of the crew at that time, so hazard pay doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So you were beat him out of four bits. So TLDR, you were basically like, "Notice me, senpai," and then he just shot you like. And... Not that much. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I want that anime so bad. <laughs> They just try to get one person to notice them, and it ends with them being shot by that person because they were stalking them. Oh. That should be interesting to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think that's perfect for this crew. Fantastic. Okay, so after the fourth or fifth salvage on the way to Cass, uh, you basically found Gertis, shot him, brought him on board, and then Gertis was like, but, but, I can stay, right? <laughs> uh, and you got yourself a new crew member. Uh, so afterwards, you eventually found Vorka. Mm. So, I have a good idea. Let me yep. know if I'm overstepping my bounds, Taylor. Uh, but, uh, once they were on their way. Uh, they found a 
area in the in a sphere uh, where there was a very uh, there was a latent sort of boundary between planes <clears throat> where the shadow fell met mm -hmm. the material plane very closely and uh, a portal opened up and they were sent to scavenge the remains of the portal opening up uh, and they actually found you coming through the portal mm. uh, running away from whatever basically yeah that sounds about right, I, w I would definitely head to a portal like that anyway, because having been, you know, the creator of, of space, the, those soft spots that I, I left behind for, for people to use in the future <laughs> uh, are always something that I, I enjoy revisiting. Right. Of course. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. And yes, Madman Frog would have heard that many times during that mission. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you stop that? No. <laughs> so would Gertis, in fact. Yeah, uh, Gertis would have as well, yeah. So, boundary of the planes, very thin, portal opened up, Taylor came out, mm -hmm. was running from some Shadowfell monster, you killed it together, mm -hmm. and Worker was like, hey, can I join up because I have nowhere else to be. And you saw that he was pretty good with his hands. Pretty good with waiting. Can literally shoot balls of key. <laughs> yes. And uh, figured, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. So we just established uh, you weren't here that Paler actually was here from a rift of the Shadowfell. Uh, he actually came out of it uh I thought he was looking a little shady. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and afterwards, uh, you guys found Ilix. Where would you find Ilix? Because that that is a... I have no idea where to start with that. Some port. He's probably trying to find a ship to get off wherever it is we are. Oh, almost desperate to get off the world. Okay. So we're so, getting ready to leave one day, and we hear a please don't kill me begging voice. Um, and basically he just tries to hitch a ride with us as we're leaving. I mean, I guess, I'm assuming you have something to offer us. I'm, I'm willing to work for, um, we'll work for food. Under um, heavy supervision, I hope. Food is cheap. Yeah, that sounds good. I like I like cheap. <laughs> At this point, I yeah, I have can I, I make no demands of monetary since some simple survival is my priority at this point. I really like this guy. <laughs> I'm I going to add you be more like him. <laughs> I don't have the navigation nor repair skill, but I do have a high intelligence score and would be willing to pick those up over time. Okay. So I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't mind. I just spent most of my life in the Shadowfell. <laughs> Weird monsters are I, I am used to. Oh. oh, you consider me a fellow monster? I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one you, thing like, you would... Oh, I'm green with envy. Ah. <laughs> uh, I think one thing you you would probably notice is that I don't... Is this... Forga doesn't speak in... Doesn't think in common? She thinks in abyssal? I can... I can handle that. Yeah. So if you just ever go to talk to her randomly, it might come back in abyssal. Just as a, as a reflex. She can speak common. She just prefers that. I don't seem to notice the difference, because I'm listening telepathically. Fair enough. All you have to have is a language. It doesn't matter if we know it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good enough. That comes about. in handy. That does come in handy. Alright. So That actually right there gives you a reason to be on the ship anyway, as a translator. Yeah. I'm the communications yeah. officer. I look like Uhura. 
<laughs> with tentacles. Yeah. Here, we, that, we that have an ambassador. Please talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> you will also negotiate prices with this guy. <laughs> I will add the fear that um, you are actually running from a mob on a, on a planet. Uh, and as soon as the port, the, the, the ship comes out of port, you see a large mob of uh, people with torches and pitchforks basically oh, chasing after, after the Let's get out of here. ship. <laughs> yeah, yes, they'll definitely come after you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going to be the problem we're going to run to. You realize that, right? We're going to see yeah. an angry mob, and we're not going to know which one of us they're actually coming after. Oh, we, we're, we're going to know. It's going to be the mob player. Lucky for me, I, 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 don't have, I only have a enemy. Boy, I hope he doesn't come after me. <laughs> Oh, oh boy, I hope they don't come I, after me. I, I, I may have only pissed off most of the divine pan pantheon of wild. Mm. And people I'm like good. me, so I, I, I'm fine. So anything with gif in front of it automatically wants to kill me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. 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 There, there's probably a lot of things That's that fair. automatically want to kill you, to be yeah, fair. I mean, it's oh, we'll see. It's we'll see how long this character survives. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Pretty fair. All right. Uh, yeah. Now that you guys got all together, uh, you are escaping from that port. Uh, well, leaving from the port uh, when you found a new job, a very peculiar job. Mm. Now, this is where the uh, the unique party item comes in. And the the establishing relationships comes in. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to decide on what that job was and uh, what you got from it. And one thing that each of your characters did to save the day, in a way, to basically save the party, help the party, do something, what have you, including the captain... Just because he's there doesn't mean, you know, he has to be, you know, all that. Uh, My but, amazingness is, is Yes, is no. <laughs> you actually have to do something. Uh, so is, is bragging something? Uh, no. Uh, but let's decide on what the, what the job was. So, few ideas. Uh, a huge... Derelict ship uh, was actually reported missing. Or uh, rather, rather, a huge ship was reported missing, and it is now derelict. You went to scavenge it and found that it was covered in monsters. It was basically a dungeon. That's if you've ever had uh, alien vibes, yes. What I was about to say, what I was going to refer to Warhammer, mm. uh, a uh, Space Hulk. Space Hulk. Yes, cool. it was basically a space hulk, uh, and what it basically was was a uh, a giant ship with habit uh, habitat and um, like plants and animals and things like that, where people would live and uh, fly through space, going through s from sphere to sphere uh, as nomads. And something happened. You went to go investigate it. And found monsters aboard, which you basically killed and went through a dungeon. Uh, and at the end of it, you got a prize. Uh, you got like a treasure, basically. Um, uh, are we if everybody's to... okay with that, or we can do something else if you have any other better ideas. That sounds quite nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. I have no issues with that one. Okay. No, I don't either. Space Hulk. Yeah. Spell Jam yeah, Edition. As long Spell as there were no gene stealers involved, I'm happy. There were no gene stealers involved. Oh, yes. Thankfully, you would have probably died. If yeah. Were... Oh, yeah. And, uh, shit. What were the Dominators? No. no what that was it called? They... Mm. I have no idea what that is, but anyway. Um, uh, DC villain. Nah, no, man. Okay, sorry, off track, go on. It was... So, Captain, what did you do to save the day, help the party, basically to 
to further the relationship with your crewmates? What did you do during this mission? Hmm. And slavers. Question. Were any of the creatures on the ship intelligent? Some of them were, yes. Well, yeah, what kind of creatures? Uh, there were things like, uh, there were beholders, there were, uh, fey, lots of fey, uh, there were demons and devils, and, uh, there were also, uh, let's see, let me just look something up real quick. Okay. What I did in the course of this mission was I managed to help the crew to escape a very dangerous situation by basically telling a demon my life story and distracting him long enough for the others to get away. Uh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. I like it. Also, there's an aspect of my character that I think your character will really like, Casey. What's that? It's my ideal. <laughs> I'm an acolyte. Seven gods is what I do. <laughs> oh, there you go. You, you, you already found it. You didn't even realize that's who you were signing on with. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasant surprise. I don't worship you, but I will help you. Well, no one's perfect. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> uh, I will say there were, uh, as well, lots of fungi. Uh, oh, God. Monsters, fun fun guys. Yes, lots oh. of fungi. Yes, uh, lots of fungi. Uh... Shriekers, gas spores, violet fungus, things like that. Uh, some elementals as well, like Dao. Uh, it was just a smorgasbord of creatures and things like that. Um, what you basically found Guys, out I'll be back later... I'm going to go shout at my dog. Okay, no problem. I was about to say, there's also a, there's also a dog from Earth. In yes. the collection, barking. It's called Bart from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> he has his own asteroid. <laughs> like Super Meta. So if that's what the captain did, I, mine is easy. I can tell you, at some point, we were about to trust some beholder or devil, and I telepathically found out that he was lying. He was trying to lure us into a trap. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Okay. And as for me, I actually have an an item I would have used. I can only do, use it once, but I have the spy fly, which it can travel up to 300 feet away from me, and I can control it, but I, I am blind and deaf in the meantime, but I can see and hear through the fly. So you can a spider trap? I, I can just go 300 feet away as long as I want, as long as it's within 300 feet. So you scouted ahead mm. and actually managed to find a hidden entrance, mm. let's say, uh, into a more safe and secure area where you guys could camp for the night. Because mm. uh, it did take days on the space. Oh, home. yeah. Mm. Uh, and did you, you said you, that was a one-use item? It's a once-a-day item. A once-a-day item, okay. Every 24 hours, I can activate it. That's good. But once I okay. deactivate it, it's done. There's no limit on how long, but once I deactivate it, it's done. Okay. No and I'm problem. blind and deaf while I use it. Mm. Only downside. <coughs> okay. Back. So we yeah. established that uh, Elix actually managed to find uh, a ruse that a devil or a beholder was concocting and uh, managed to save you guys from making a deal with them. Um, because he was lying or something like that, uh, basically using his telepathic psionic powers to figure that out. Uh, and we also established that Taylor's character, Vorka, used his, uh, used her spy, uh, a fly to find a hidden entrance where all of you could basically find rest and refuge for the night. Uh, and managed to make it a lot easier 
uh, where there was food and water and shelter um, for the night. Very nice. Uh, what about Frawl? What did Frawl do? Well, it has to be ship related, right? So Obviously. I'm I'm thinking uh, we are escaping this place with a price. Uh, but there are still like things coming at, uh, after us. So, uh, flying things, I'm guessing. So, uh, part of it would be basically the escape and uh, the pursuit they're in uh, when they were following us. And I basically made, uh, uh, made it uh, possible for us to lose them. Let's say oh, an asteroid those flipped flying up. Heads, the flying yeah. heads with the... With the uh... The wings on them. Exactly. Uh, uh, and then and there's basically they a dog fight. Yeah. <laughs> those, those things. Yeah. What are they called? Yargools? Yargools. Vargools. The V. Vargools. Okay. Yes. Those. Yeah. Those were coming after you, screeching like bats out of hell, and uh, you basically managed to get away from them. Right? Yeah, through an asteroid field and everything. It was very through cool. an asteroid field. Yeah. Amazing. There's always an asteroid Wait, field you, when there's a hot pursuit in space. Minox? Yeah. What are, what are Minox? The things that were all over the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars. No. Oh. <laughs> no. If, if it was an asteroid field, I mean, maybe it was Minox. Yeah. Were we almost eaten by a giant space worm as well? I mean, that was the end boss, right? Yeah, that was the end boss, obviously. Yeah. Uh, giant infestation. Yes. Uh, how about Seeger's character, Gertus? What, what did Gertus do? Uh, well, the best... The best, uh... uh you know bad situation like the best thing you can have a, is a bad situation not happening right so you know maybe not a good thing happening but he prevented a very bad thing from happening maybe we couldn't leave the ship uh, maybe there's a magical thing in the way and he had to, it would have been something ritual based something he would have had to sit down and perform a ritual of some kind and maybe even be protected for some time uh, but he would have cast something that helped us and wouldn't have seemed like he did anything, if that makes sense. If you okay. get what I'm saying, like... So he did nothing the entire time. <laughs> obviously he did something, but he it would have been he didn't do something good for us, he prevented a bad thing from happening to us. Mm. So well, basically we landed and there was a trap or something. Yeah, or maybe we were trying to leave and couldn't, or... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We like, got, when like, we were trapped docking, in a room, there was, maybe. There was, we kind of triggered one of those uh, Firefly bomb things, like, so if we tried oh, to yeah, go away, yeah. we exactly. would explode. Exactly, but it was magical. Yeah. So here's, here's a good idea. Tell me if, if you like this. Uh, while they were arguing on what, what they basically should do, uh, and there was suggestions here and there... Uh, what what it basically would ha what happens is uh, once you docked uh, a magical ward, the security system basically turned on again once you docked, uh, stopping anything and everything from leaving and also entering. Uh, and what basically happened was you had to turn that off. Uh, hold on, my screen just turned off. Mm -hmm. Just as I said, turn Justice, off. Just as you said that. <laughs> did you, did you uh, realize you had installed voice controls? Oh, he's actually a technomancer, <laughs> and he yes now realizing that he can control this with his voice. Uh, so, once once you figured that out, uh, it was pretty easy. You found a book uh, in in the libraries of uh, the Space Hulk, basically uh, that detailed everything about the security and uh, the magic awards that were placed upon the ship uh, and you managed to do a ritual which turned it off as they were arguing and what happened was 
the captain said, you know, enough is enough. We're just going to leave right now. We're just going to brute force it. And as soon as he did, boom, his plan worked because you were there and you turned it off. And because I'm amazing. And because he's <laughs> Yeah. So really, it didn't seem like I did much. Mm. But, you know. But I we did. would know. I like... I know. That's yeah. what's important. Okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that I'm amazing. Uh, cool question, Doc. Sorry to pull away, but find familiar uh, details, you know, a very like small amount of familiars that you can have. And right. you said you would be okay with other familiars, right? I would be. Super would you... dragons, gazers. D yeah, that's what I was going to ask about. Do you mind if gazer. I have a gazer? I am totally okay with you having a awesome. gazer. Awesome. Just know that they're going to be really annoying. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Good. Great. No, but they're they're great for spellcasters. So, they are. Uh, yeah, they can't attack. Of, you could have had one of the Vinox. Are they the little beholders? Yeah, yeah. the tiny little. Yeah, the, the, tiny. the tiny little beholder. Yeah. Oh, like uh, it is not allowed in the cockpit. I will just say every they time cannot... it tries to get in, like goes with a broom and like. <laughs> oh, 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 no! Get out! <laughs> Uh, they can attack. Just saying, for future they can't. reference, they, they can't can't because can't, they right, cannot. Yeah. It's a familiar, familiar, so yes. Uh, but they do have other. <coughs> um, either way, what you found, uh, inside of the large uh space hulk. Uh, is a magic item, but we're going to design it together. So, what kind of magic item? It's going to be of legendary quality. It's going to be big. It's not going to be something you can carry around. Mm. I, I would say it might be some. Here's a suggestion, yes, but it was basically a very important part of the ship. So, it's well, something that made. Yeah, maybe, or like something that just made the ship. I mean, quick very question good, though. I mean, why better. wouldn't we just take the helm if we're salvaging? It seems like that'd just be a pretty good idea. No, no, because we depends on how big the helm is. Yeah, and we, I think part of it was that we like it. It, it isn't. It isn't cleared out the place, so we. It's not. Could we well, have right, made okay. a piano out of the creatures that were there? No. <laughs> Maybe what we found was sentient, or maybe not sentient, but maybe we were after a creature because this is what the point of the ship seems to be. Okay. Maybe. So I just tossed a maybe suggestion out there. A, a rare creature, then. Okay. Maybe an NPC. Is everybody okay with no? No. Uh, I was more talking about the reason I said sentient at first is because maybe like it is an item, but this seems like a very uh, dangerous ship. Maybe this is like I'm sorry. Could we verify what kind of ship is this? Like a prison ship or a this like, is a, a habitat director? ship? It's a nomad ship. It's, it's, like it's a, a very ship. large. Yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's a generation. It ship. had. Uh, it actually has greenery. Built into it, so okay. it can and, and thrive and produce animals. food. Yes, exactly. Okay, so and maybe I, maybe what we're after is some sort of like gek. Yeah, uh, terraformer. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would. I, I would still vote for something that would make it set our ship apart. Um, like so, so it's somehow uh, enhanced. I, it doesn't necessarily maybe what, something. We get a gek. No, I got it. A magic item that replenishes atmosphere. That actually would be That's great. We... No, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay. A magical item that transforms, that polymorphs essentially a ship. Ooh, yes. That yeah. will. Uh, what I'm thinking, out like maybe not. Uh, you might not agree with this, but maybe just straight up turn our mantis into a literal giant mantis that's alive. <laughs> and we just live in it. It's just hollow. Magic. I mean, yeah. I would not. It's essentially just a, 
a I wouldn't either. magical helm that polymorphs and improves the ship. Is anyone opposed to that? I'm not. How would that work? <laughs> if, if, the man, if the ship is alive, it, it is much better at uh, maneuvering. Because yeah, you're don't not have like, to pilot it. It's you just like a far stick living ship. And maybe, yeah, maybe it could even like, depending on what type of ship. Yeah, okay, so maybe like if it's placed on a whale a, ship. I'm just I'm just throwing examples like from the top of my head, right? I'm, this is not right. what I'm saying. I should let me go let me with. stop you. I will I will make a uh, just a what's the word? Limitation. Looking for a word. Oh, no, perfect. not a limitation. Uh, recommendation. A recommendation. Uh, how about a, a figurine? A uh, not a figurine. A, a figurehead for the ship. Oh, like the hamster. Like the like a hamster, yes. I don't want to do a space hamster. Figurehead yeah, yeah, for the mantis ship. That is either a giant mantis or some other thing. Although it would look weird on a on a mantis ship, I'm not gonna lie. No. Yeah. My idea was like kind of changing and improving the ship in a magical way. So like imagine a chariot, like a dragon chariot. It, if placed on that, you wouldn't need actual dragons. Magical dragons would pull the damn thing. <sighs> could, or something could we, like... Could we combine the idea of the what Seeker's on about with the figurehead and have okay. it be not necessarily an actual figurehead but have it be something that makes the ship come alive only for a short amount of time? I, what Absolutely. would happen with us inside... Though I, I just want to make it's fine. We're well, it, magic. It, it doesn't have to become the whole point a living is, thing. It just needs to become. Well, it looks alive, alive and it's magically yeah. alive. Yeah. That's mm. the point. It's, it's, okay. it's For anyone ship. that's seen the show uh, Farscape, they have a living ship. Yeah, something mm. that turns it into something like that would be a, yeah. a, a, a workable idea. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's still a ship, and it, but it has it could, a degree of, of self sufficiency. And like you plugged an AI into it. It could. Oh, uh, basically, it, like the like in the previous game, the mini jammer. Maybe, yes, maybe exactly even right. have yeah. it. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe it have it actually be a sentient magical AI, like mm. that plug. Like, so it could effectively do whatever it wants with with the ship magically, like depending okay. on its its scale, yeah. right? Like a magic else. AI. Mm. So here's here's. Formulating the ideas, I got a, I got a good plan. So while you were scavenging the ship, <clears throat> you came upon a magical core, and in this core, you found a number of magical items uh, too big to, to basically.